It's Monday, March 16, 2015, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. In a bit of an unsurprising move, Xiaomi announced their plans to update their wearable lineup this weekend. They're going to be rolling out a second iteration of their Mi Band with NFC support, but more interestingly, they're working on a smartwatch. From the article over on Gizmo China, there aren't really any specifics given about it yet, but it does sound like it's not going to be running Android Wear, so I'll be curious to see what they come up with. Microsoft announced this weekend that they're going to be bringing their Cortana digital assistant software to both Android and iOS. I've spent a little bit of time with Cortana running on an inexpensive Windows phone that I've got, and I do have to say, when it comes to Android, it should be a really interesting alternative to Google Now. I am hoping maybe that this means they're planning for a Microsoft Band 2 as well, because the first one, it didn't really blow me away, but it had the potential to do it. Google released an update to the YouTube app for Android this weekend as well, bringing along with it support for 360 degree video playback. I think 360 360 degree videos will provide an interesting option, but I'm curious to see if it's going to go anything beyond being a bit of a, a neat party trick. Realistically, a lot of the videos that I watch wouldn't gain anything from a 360 degree field of view, and looking at the content I make myself, you guys definitely wouldn't want to see what's going on behind the camera there. There be dragons. I can see things like concert videos, things like skateboard tricks and parkour doing really well in 360 degrees, but I'm curious to know what other things you guys can imagine it being used for. And don't say porn because that's not allowed on YouTube. Moving on to some software updates. As of this weekend, someone from Motorola announced on Google Plus that they're in the middle of a soak test for Lollipop on the 2013 Moto X, which is bringing version 502 to the device. Yu has also started a beta testing program to bring Lollipop to the Eureka phone as well well, so if you're an owner of that device, you might want to head on over to their forum and take a look. As of the filming of this video right now, they've gone ahead and closed applications to be in the beta program, but they might open up more slots over time, and one way or another you can just keep an eye on their forum just to see more updates. Official CM12 nightlies have become available for the Galaxy Tab S 8.4, so do make sure to check out their download page if you've got that device. XTA recognized contributor Jack Eagle and some other developers put out an alpha version of CM12 for the Galaxy S5 Mini, specifically the G800H version. The camera is the main thing on their not working list for now, but do make sure to read through that thread to see what else might be going on. Also this weekend, XDA recognized developer Mike Gapinski and some other developers worked to bring Android 502 from AOSP to the 2011 Xperia devices. And thanks to XDA senior member MCGI5SR2, an alpha of OmniROM Lollipop based on 5.1 is now available for the Galaxy S3 i9300. Again, it is an alpha, so I probably wouldn't stick it on my daily driver device if I were you, and do make sure to read through that forum thread for more details. And since sideloading a factory image of Android kills root on your device, a pre-rooted stock ROM of Android 5.1 for the Nexus 6 has been made available thanks to XDA recognized developer Scrozzler. And speaking of rooting, the Droid Turbo has apparently been rooted now, but the method of rooting it hasn't been made available yet. J Case confirmed in the bounty thread that this is a legitimate route, but still, nothing about how it was actually done has been posted yet. So if you are a Verizon user looking for a new device, the Turbo is probably a good option. I did post a review over it over on my channel just a few weeks ago, so if you'd like to see my thoughts on it, head on over there. And just to wrap things up, a new forum was added this weekend for the 2015 Moto G. But you know what? That's going to be about all from me for today. You can find the links to all the stories I talked about down in the video description, as well as the links to my YouTube channels. Sorry if this is a bit rough. I'm trying a new camera out, and I wanted to let you guys experience a little bit of 4K fun. And remember, if you like this video, please do hit the like button down below the video. It lets us know that you care, and subscribe to receive all of our content as soon as it becomes available. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.